Heresy Thursday is once again with us, and with it comes a new assassin for the Forces of Chaos, and new heads for our Astartes. Oh, first thing you get is the Infernus Abomination. This is an absolutely beautiful, sinister, pure chaos looking model. It looks genuinely terrifying, and really well sculpted. I really like this model. I like the weird, like, possessed nature of the model. It looks like there it might be some human elements underneath the uh, red flesh. The mask looks terrifying. I like the hoof design, this kind of very animalistic, very unnatural look to it. It's perfect for the uh, Demons of the Ruin Storm. I also really like the uh, mix of mechanical and biological and other Empyrean materials here. The uh, metal tubed pipe dreadlocks ending in some kind of chemical chamber. It's, it's quite an interesting idea, the idea that uh, they might not necessarily be too in control of themselves, so if anyone wants to add any combat stims to the being, they need to do it from a distance. Is quite interesting and has some very cool implications, the idea that these tubes also run through the body to the uh, ranged weapon fist monstrosity on its arm. Also, again, really cool, very uncomfortable, very unnatural. Perfect for the forces of chaos. Whilst a weapon does not a good unit make, certainly helps, and uh, the hammer blade um, stat line here is one that really screams out to me as someone who's uh, very very caught up with uh, the obsession of hammers at the moment in Heresy uh, for my Emperor's Children. Having a built-in strength eight AP2 murderous strike and brutal weapon, that's beautiful. And then for dealing with Astartes, the uh, Reach 2 Breaching 6 plus 2 handed Spine Lash, which is strength 4, is also really good as well. Getting those strikes in definitely first against a target is very important in the Heresy because you have initiative steps. So having that initiative plus two from the Reach, very good. I like that a lot. And then for dealing with Chaff and large squads of probably Solar Auxilia or Imperial Cults, I'll get on to that one. Having the Talon Rakes is also very handy as well, making sure you can guarantee those uh, wounds actually happen with the Shred and getting those attacks of Rampage. Before we go on to talking about the heads that got announced in this uh, Warcom article, I want to talk a little bit more about the Assassin and what it means for the Heresy going forwards, as with this comes a lot of implications. The first one, and one which I'm more excited about, is this is effectively Games Workshop announcing the next book in the series. We had the Assassins revealed and teased, um, long before we got the Libra Imperium book, which featured them. And in Libra Imperium, we know that there is a faction coming to the game called Agents of the Warmaster. If this guy is not part of the Agents of the Warmaster, I don't know who is. And in that situation, we've got a brand new character, or a yet-to-be-announced faction, and I can only assume this means the next book will be the Chaos version of Liber Imperium, which I'm going to make the assumption an educated guess is probably going to be called Liber Chaotica, as a nice reference and throwback to an old book Games Workshop published, also one that's just very thematic and fitting. And what I personally think will be in that book will be the Demons of a Ruin Storm, Agents of a Warmaster, and the Imperial Cults and Militia armies. That's entirely speculation, but based off the Lieb Imperium book, I reckon that's what we're going to see in that book. We know demons are coming, we've just had our first Agents of Warmaster model seemingly uh, given to us, and we know Imperial Cults are getting a faction book soon. And all three of those tie up very nicely into the Liber Chaotica book, mirroring what we got with the Liber Imperium book. Right, now let's talk about the heads. I really like these. It's nice to have some bare head options which aren't the uh, token ones 
in the base kits. There's a nice set of variety across the two kits, we'll look at the others in a second. These ones look very good, and I like the fact that I've intentionally shown these in multiple skin tones as well to give us some idea of the range of possibilities of expressions and looks these heads can have, as well as showing them off in a very well-painted manner. I think you can have a lot of fun with these by, especially with a bold head, sculpting your own hair onto it. it. Wouldn't be too difficult, and I think certain ones here, especially one in the bottom right, would look fantastic with Empress Children styled hair on it. The uh, second lot of heads, I feel like they've put a lot more character specific flair to these, and I think they look really good for it. I'm still going to definitely be picking these up because I just want to add that flavour and that variety to my marines even if they aren't necessarily 100% fitting to the legions I play. I still think that they would fit into any legion given the correct skin colour and hair colour and you can always do tattoos or war scars. Worst case scenario, you can always turn them into severed heads and decorate your models with them, because most legions would do that anyway. So, whilst this uh, week's um, reveals may not be necessarily the most exciting for most people, I understand that not everyone's going to be interested in running an agent of a warmaster in their armies, especially if you play loyalists, it's kind of a, uh, an irrelevant thing. And for a lot of people, they might not be interested in having some bare head options. But honestly, this week has got me personally very excited for what's to come, as it gives us a glimpse of the future with the uh, agent of the warmaster model, and it also shows us that they are basically done with the space marines for now, in terms of um, upgrades for the models. So I can't really see much else for them to do in terms of four drawed upgrade kits. It now feels like a very complete and very well-rounded range of head and shoulder upgrades for the models. So going forward, I can only see it being new stuff being added that we haven't already seen. So I think next week is going to be a lot of fun. I have made it this far into the video. I hope you are as excited as I am about the future of the Horus Heresy, especially after last week's somewhat disappointing announcement. At least this gives us a glimpse into what is to come for the uh, Horus Heresy and uh, what releases we should expect. Thank you for watching this far. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Horus Heresy news, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. And for those who want to help me spread the beautiful words of the Dark Gods, consider supporting me on Ko-fi. With that all being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.